He is going to do something tomorrow that's never been done before. That's what Shams trainer Pancho Martin told Lafitte Pinkai Jr. the night before the 1973 Kentucky Derby. And he was right. They're at the head of the stretch, and Sham is the leader. Secretariat on the outside to take the lead. Sham holding in second. At the wire, it's going to be Secretariat. He wins it by two lengths. He still holds the record for the second fastest derby ever run. Simply put, Sham was the right horse, but in the wrong place. There's a strong left-handed whip again by Pinkai. the wrong time. This weekend, Sham's legacy is remembered at Santa Anita Park. Welcome back to Race Day America. 1970 was a tough year to be foaled, and that was the case with Sham. Great was second best when you're foaled the same year as the great secretariat. And the story has been documented in a new book entitled Sham Great Was Second Best, written by Phil Dandria, who joins us right now in Race Day America. Phil, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vic. Wonderful to have you here with us. And this book um, is such a, a lovely documentation of Sham's history, his legacy, and, and, and how he had to compete with one of the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. What was your inspiration to write this book? Well, at the turn of the century, the 20... 20th to 21st century, um, ESPN did a Greatest Athletes of the 20th Century show, and they did one on Secretariat. And um, the way they presented it, it seemed that no horse uh, could even get close, like Secretariat was invincible. And um, as uh, they later got on in the story, I heard about Secretariat winning the Derby, beating his rival Sham, and you know giving him a fight, really making him earn it. And then again in the Preakness, again besting Sham. And I thought, wait a minute, who's this Sham? I had, um, I remembered when I was a boy, Secretariat, his name was everywhere uh, when he was going for the Triple Crown. But I hadn't back then. I didn't know who Sham was, and I didn't know the details. So I looked up on uh, the internet, trying to find something about Sham. And all I could find were things like Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs, if you remember your 60s mm -hmm. music, or linens like pillow shams, that sort of thing. There's very little on sham, uh, let alone a book. So I thought, well, maybe I should try to write it. <laughs> and that's really what inspired me. And uh, your sources for the book, how did you begin this process of research? Uh, well, like I said, there was, there was not much on the uh, internet, so I thought maybe the best way to start was talk to the people who were close to him. Primary and sources. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, I was able to reach Frank Pancho Martin, his trainer, Sham's trainer, and he was very gracious. He talked with me, and he helped me get in touch with Jorge Velasquez, who in, uh, at Belmont and Aqueducts known as Georgie, Georgie Velasquez. Right, right. Um, and Heliodoro Gustinez, who his friends call him Gus. Um, and uh, the, uh, Gus was Sham's first jockey. So th I spoke with them and got some information. And later I traveled to the different tracks and um, here, you know, Santa Anita and talked to people. I, bet, uh, I met Bill Moshan, who you may know. He's been here for years. He's a photographer. And he gave me, from his archives, just dozens of photos, which I used. He was a great source and a great help. And Pinkai, well. I would imagine. Lafitte Pinkai Jr. would have been one that perhaps you encountered during your research. I did. I was not able to line up an interview with him with travel and whatnot, but I did. Um, I went to the Keelan Association, Li uh, Keelan Association Library in Lexington, Kentucky, and they had daily racing form, blood horse, all you know, contemporary mm -hmm. accounts. And it was just I just spent days in there photocopying, and then I would highlight and annotate, and then that. After that, go back the next year, start again. And Wonderful. Just and the research. cover, you see Sham w in what looks like a winning move in front of Secretariat. And we'll take another mm -hmm. look at that right there. If you, if you notice, you can see Secretariat's nose right in here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, w tell us about that photo. That I saw in an article. Um, it, that I got permission from the um, Louisville Courier Journal to use that photo. I really liked it. I particularly like, can we hold that up again? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, what I really liked about that we can get another look at the photo book was that it really captured the emotion. If you can see, 
in the top row, the uh, the media were really playing up Secretary his charisma and how popular he was. And if you look at the young ladies in the top row there, uh -huh. you can just really see in their faces. There's like four or five of them. Uh. Really, the emotion, and I thought that really captured it nicely. And uh, that plus this is the final stretch yeah. of the Derby, and Sham is ahead, so I like that as well. No, <laughs> I know how you feel about that. Uh, rags to riches and Curla, and I like the picture where they're both together in the Belmont Stakes. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the release of Secretariat, the movie, did you find an increasing interest in Sham? And was there a sense of disappointment writing this, knowing he wasn't going to get there, that you mm -hmm. couldn't change this result somehow? Uh, there is a lot more now on Sham, I've noticed as I've looked on the web. Uh, as I was writing it, uh, there was not so much a sense of disappointment, because I kind of saw Sham as sort of like a folk hero, the uh, the everyman that works hard, and I think a lot of people could relate to him because they feel that no, ma no matter how well they do, how hard they work, they just can't seem to catch a break. So I kind of looked at him from that perspective, but also I, there's a point in there at the end of the Triple Crown battle where uh, Sigmund Summer, Sham's owner, goes to Belmont Park on Sunday after it's all been done, after all the battles with Secretary and it's all done. And he said, last night I went home, got drunk and cried. <laughs> and I kind of felt a little like that too at times. Yeah, yeah, so. I'm sure. And in the movie Secretary, Poncho Martin is created to be this very boisterous, bullish kind of character. Did you find him to be that way as well when you interviewed him? I think he is very serious about his horses, and he really keeps an eye on them. When I spoke with him, we would be talking. He was very nice to me, very. Uh, but his um, his man would be walking horses around the barn at the time, and he'd stop for a minute, and he'd say something to them in Spanish, and then he'd get back to me. And I, no, I didn't find it, but I, I maybe I was taken a little aback, saying, that, don't mess with Pancho Martin. But he was very kind to me. So so where can fans pick up Sham Great with Second Best? Where can you buy the book? Well, there's a signing today at... Uh, Champions? At Champions oh, from 11 to 1230. Uh -huh. And uh, I, there's a website as well. It's through Acanthus Publishing. They have a website. But there's also one um, for the book, shamhorse.com. Shamhorse.com. Well, thank you right. so much for being with us today. Great, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Phil Dandria, and you could win a copy of this book, Sham Great with Second Best. If you have the correct answer,